Happy Sabbath to everyone. I'm so glad and uh, it's my privilege and honor to, to share the word of God with you today. Um, as always, I said, I don't expect to be something new for you. The Bible is, uh, in the same time, the old book and the new. But in the way that we could uh, read and understand the teachers of the Bible could make some changes in our life. And my uh, prayer and desire and wishes is that we should get something from the Word of God today that will improve our character and will prepare ourselves for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as already was spoken by the brother of uh, that the title is some, somehow, I don't know exactly if it's the proper word to use, eligibility, but in the same time, I was thinking what to use as a title. Because I believe all of us that we just joined this church, and not only us, our families, our desire, our goal, our final destination is to be in a heavenly place, which is not this country or this planet Earth. For now, uh, <clears throat> my question to you, after we had the reading of the scripture, there is the promise that we are, <clears throat> I'm sorry, fellow citizen with the, the saints. So my question to you, and even to me, do we have our citizenship of heaven yet? Yes and no. Yes, because we believe. And by faith, we are told the promise is here. No, because we are not able to fit in the society of angels yet. If we look carefully to our character. And uh, as I'm dealing with this, I I'm just thinking about uh, when you come closer to those people that they have office and they, they will give you the information. They will tell you, first of all, check it out. I mean, there is a list, and you, ha you have to check it out if you are eligible or not. So let us think about, and um, we are citizen of heaven in a promise, but we are tem temporary residents on the planet Earth. Is that true or not? Yes. Did we call yet this place our home or not? We will see in our study. Well, as in the physical world, the people, they are looking for documents, and the documents are so important. So I'm just thinking, what kind of documents do we have for now, referring to the citizenship in heaven? You know, the people they used to have here uh, promises, and then they go further, they have invitation, right? Do we have one of these? Yes, we have both. And more than that, the people, they, they trust more in the sponsorship. Do we have a sponsorship? Did somebody pay for us to, to be there, invited? And more than that, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, went there and he's going to prepare the place for us, waiting for us. Well, before to, to go to our home, I would like to, to understand for myself and we'll just uh, you know clarify maybe in, in an introduction let's define what is the kingdom because the kingdom is a, a name and uh, generally speaking it was used for many many years now uh, I just found this a very short definition that king stands for king right and Dom stands for king's domain. So in the beginning, we know that it was only one, the creator and king of kings. To whom belongs this planet Earth? To the Lord, right? So uh, how was in the beginning? Adam, is, according to the Bible, we can search that in a, a Gospel according to Luke, chapter 3, verse 38. That is written, Adam was called son of God. If the king has a son, do we have the right to question the citizenship for the son? 
Why not? Automatically. Automatically, he has citizenship, right? So we were created with this purpose to live forever and our citizenship to be in heavenly place. Well, then what happened? We have Genesis uh, chapter 4. We know the long story, but I'm not insisting on the story, but only in verse 16 and verse 17. Genesis 4. We know after in the first family that horror things happen. One brother killed another one. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwell in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife and con she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built it a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. What do you think about this man? That he went out of the presence of the Lord? Was he pleased with the citizenship of heaven? Was he pleased with the, the dominion of the king in his life? Had he pleasure, I mean, had the pleasure to stay any longer with the creator? So then he created another country, let's say, city, to protect himself and his family, and he went. So I, I can say from that time we have in the history of the planet Earth two places that the people choose to live in. The world, which at the time, I'm sure that the ruler of that world, it was not God. Later on, we, we can read in the Bible that it's called the sons of men and sons of God. They separate themselves. They, they built up a kingdom, separate kingdom. But the ruler, as we know, it was not God. So Satan uh, continued to influence the human beings to go out from the presence of the Lord, and they become so many, many, almost majority. So, and then the Lord... I'm not talking about the flood and the Babel, but I'm talking about later on when the Lord saw that the people, they just want to be separated from God. Of course, all the generation, they have the representative of the people of God. So we have a very interesting fact in the scripture. And I'm calling this gentleman first immigrant or emigrant. How do you call him? Emigrant. He came out. We have Genesis 12, when the Lord just invite a man called Abram at the time, come out from your nation, leave the country, because I'm thinking just to give you an, a beautiful country, I mean, wonderful country, that will be your country. So for this one, the gentleman, I mean, our brother, our faithful father uh, of the believers, as the Bible is calling him, knew that his citizenship is not in that country on, or on the land that he lived in. So he lived as a pilgrim and stranger, and all the patriarchs, they live the same. We remember that it's an honor to say, even in the prayer, our father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They have indeed this feeling that they are not belonging to this earth. But they love God with all their heart and they follow him by faith. So for many centuries, people of God loved to be in the presence of the Lord and recognize him as a leader and as a king of kings. And they were looking to be citizen in the heavenly place by faith in the presence of the Lord. Please let us open the Bibles in chapter 11 to see this confirmed in the Bible. 11, starting with verse 13. All these die in faith, not having received the promises but having seen them afar off and they were and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they are strangers and pilgrims on the earth for they 
that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of the country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. Not a city that they built, but another city that God built for them. Do you believe that these promises could be ours? Are we looking for that place and the fulfillment of the promises with us? Did they receive yet? No. They are waiting to be together with us. They were children of king of kings. God was their father, and he is not ashamed to, to be called their father. And they prayed, and their prayer was as in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus Christ teach us to, to say every day. If we don't forget that, are, you, are we used to say that every day? I'm just asking because sometimes we forgive or forget about. How often do we ask the Lord, thy kingdom come? If you find yourself that you forget to say this, that is a problem. You just get used with this country, in this place, in this land. And uh, our desire is not, we are not very, very uh, interested to, to, to see the heavenly place. So, um, to see that the citizenship, they have even rights, even for heavenly place, and have responsibilities as well. Do you know that? Even here in planet Earth, on the planet Earth, we have this. So, um, I would like to, to use a, a, a story from the Bible to see how the people that their kingdom minded look like. The people that they, not only by words, but by action, show that they are prepared to be citizen in a heavenly place. And the story is after many, many years, thousands of years, when the Lord just declared that he is the king of kings, he just got out uh, Abraham, and they were living for many years having this... Um, Theocracy. I mean, the Lord was their leader. The Lord led them from place to place. So, but after many years, this is a very important story to my understanding, and I don't know exactly how, how to consider this. We have a king that appeared on the arena of the, the you know, history of the world, but not a usual king. Is a king that would be rule, uh, I mean, uh, reign over the people of God. I'll call or say about him is the first king that he just gained the, the kingdom, but he lost the citizenship. So I think it's not something pleasant to be honored, to be a king, and to interfere in the between God and the people, and to lose. The Lord says, never call somebody father or, you know, because you have only one father. But this is not because he wanted. He accepted, and then he showed what human beings can do without God. Let's read in 1 Samuel chapter 8, starting with verse 20. We know that Samuel was the leader of these people of God for many years. And they had the presence of God among themselves. Through this servant, they are communicating with God. They have the um, providence working in their life. Now they get at the moment in their life, and I'm so sad because that this could be my experience and your experience. When those people, they were not satisfied 
only to have the world of heavenly place. But they just considered that they could have both worlds, even the kingdom of heaven and the worldly kingdom that they were just inaugurated at the time. So the people of Israel said, we will have a king over us that we also may like all the nation and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. This is the last word that they said. Samuel said, well, that's not the, I did a good job for you and God is going to raise up another man that will lead you. Even my family, my children will not be able to do, but God can do. And you know, the king will, will, will be different. You have problem. He is going to have his mind focused on his benefit. Because you ask to have a king as other nations they have. He will create a system. He will take from your goods and build his kingdom. And also you will not be free to have, you know, what we want to have, I mean, the worship in the way that we want, maybe he will just, you know, promote rules and law. What was their, their answer? No, we want to have. We know, but we want to have. They were so, I don't know exactly, in their mind, they knew the love of God. They knew that the mercy of the Lord will be with them. And they just abused the grace of God. At this moment, I can say they abuse. They said, oh, God will be with us, even though we will have a king. When we need him, we'll ask. Do you find yourself sometime in, in this position? And the spirit of prophecy says that we are the, in the worst condition, even more than the people of the world, the people that are, are outside of the church. Because we want to, to have benefit from two worlds. And that is not possible. The spirit of prophecy says you will lose both of them if you continue in this way. What happened with this king? We'll see. So the first time when they, they had the, the opportunity to see how a human being, an arm of flesh, can help them instead of mighty God. This king started to lead them in the battles. And the first time, at the very beginning, he failed. He showed that he is not able to do. And as I mentioned before, instead of leading the people, God said, well, even in your mistake, in your wrong way, I will be close to you to help you. But keep in mind, the king has different rules, different mentality. Now he believes that he is in charge. And he demonstrated that he, he was in charge. We know that they didn't have weapons to fight with the Philistines. And also he just, you know, use the trumpet and call all the people, let's go to, the, to have a battle. I will lead you out. And the people, they were afraid when they saw that the Philistines, they heard about, they just called their nation. There were so many comparing with a small number, 600 at the time. And also he had the opportunity to regret this position that he took and said, I'm not able. I'm here just as a leader, as Samuel did. Let's call upon, the, upon our Lord. He was told that to wait for Samuel and, you know, to bring the sacrifice to the Lord. And then the Lord will, will do the, the, the work for them. I mean, he will fight. Instead of doing that, we know the story. What did Saul do? He didn't wait for Samuel. The first step in un unbelief. Maybe we can excuse him, his 
sin. Well, it was a terrific situation. I mean, in a terror, where it was just panic because the, the Philistines were so many and the people, they left. And they left because they were, you know, afraid of. And I did that because, no, there is no excuse. No one Philistine came in your camp to touch you or to harm you. As long as you were faithful to me, they didn't touch you. Why you did that? You rushed to do according with your mind. And we know what happened. At that time, we have a kind of act of faith. His son, the first prince at the time, I believe he was a man of faith. Because according to the scripture, the, 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 the report of the scripture, he said that he just talked to his armor bearer, his friend. There is no name for this young man. But just talk to him that the Lord can help us through many or to few. I mean, a few people. How many were in the name of the Lord and they prayed when they started action? Two. Only two. So the Lord wanted to show them and to teach them a lesson, even the king and the nation, that only God is able to lead these people in the way that's supposed to be, you know, working. I'm so sad to, to, to know the story and to know even the, the end of the story when this man with so many privileges and, um, you know, having Samuel beside, he didn't obey God. So uh, Jonathan said to a young man, come, let us go over the garrison of the, this uncircumcised. It might be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord for saying, saving by many or by few. How was the victory? Amazing. Amazing. Maybe somebody will, will believe that the king just came and helped. No. They just came at the last moment. How we used to say at the Amen. The Philistines were just killing each other. They left. They ran away because the Lord was among that camp. Terrify, I mean, frightened the, the people. They were so, so afraid. And they said, the army of the Lord is here. So, uh, we need to know the people besides that we are confessing our faith. I mean, we, we know to, to, to have a very, very uh, um, much trust in our friends. Because he didn't tell his father what he's going to do. And I'm just questioning, why not? He was present. He saw what his father did. He didn't obey God. So now, as an act of faith, he said, no, I'm not going there. That's not. To have faith means to trust in every word of God. So this, this gentleman, the young man, uh, encouraged Jonathan. And not just encouraged, but he said, I'm going with you. And we know that to, to get the, the place, it was an extreme dangerous condition. But they, they went, and the Lord just showed them, according with their uh, you know, prayer, the signs. And they were conquerors. So the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. When the, the young man uh, heard that from Jonathan, he just encouraged, do all that is in your heart. Go then. Here I am with you according to your heart. And then Jonathan said, very well, let's go. Let's go because but it's very important that this friend risks his life and said, 
when you he was not a friend just to encourage you and then said go and see what what's going on no he said i'm going with you you know what was the risk he was going to protect jonathan he said i will give my life for this right cause of the lord if the lord will just allow us to to be killed, that's it. But I'm going with you. So this encouragement and uh, uh, willingness to stand with Jonathan in the battle, we know that it was at the end successful. What does it take to be a good uh, armor bearer? So God had permitted a crisis in, 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 the, in this time in the, the people of Israel that he may teach Saul and his people a lesson of humility and a dependence of his mighty arm. And uh, after this, I'm not sure exactly if the king learned the lesson. Do you? Do you know that he learned the lesson? To obey God and to, to consecrate his life and everything. The next step, he showed that he's Again, stubborn and not obeying the word of God. Samuel gets so disappointed. And he was the last time with him and said, your kingdom will not be longer your kingdom. Even though God rejects Samuel, Saul, Saul sorry, for reigning over Israel, yet to him was offered another opportunity to repent and to become a citizen of heaven, a kingdom-minded man. Samuel uh, left. He went to Ramah in his place, and he, he prayed and mourned for Saul. It was very sad experience for Samuel, a man of God. He was mourning and mourning, praying, Oh, Lord, what happened in our country, in our nation? Why you allow these things to happen? And I'll just ask Samuel, what are you doing there? Go. And I have another man. You know, I know him, David. Uh, what was the, the other opportunity? You know, the armor bearer is always close to you. He's your closest friend. In, in the case of, uh, of Jonathan, they were training together. I believe it was all the time present in, in close to the Jonathan, right? They were training together every day, every moment, just for that crisis that supposed to come. They were used to know each other very well. They share their thoughts, they share their friendship, they share their values, they share everything, right? And now, for the moment, Saul has the opportunity from God to have David. And the Bible says that, 1 Samuel 16, verse 21, and David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. What this saying to you, this statement, they are close each other. Maybe they are training together. Maybe they are having time to spend together you know, sharing their thoughts. And Saul speaking to, to, to David, and David speaking to, to Saul. They have time to know each other. My dear friends, the Bible is going farther and said, there was time when David left, and there was a crisis again in the, the camp of Israel. And we know after he killed Goliath, David said, oh, Come and stay with me. I'm so sorry because I let you go. Now stay with me in my place. Right? And they start to have to build their relationship. And actually, Saul didn't know exactly what is the plan of the Lord. And I believe, I don't know exactly, I'm just asking you. Do you believe that if Saul was friend and continued to be a good king, God reject him? I'm just thinking, it was already rejected, but I, I believe that the Lord 
will just give him more time to repent and stay as a king. But no, he went farther. And he went farther after we have the, the episode and the, the something, I mean, the statement of the scripture. When Saul felt that the kingdom would be more secure if him, one who received instruction from the Lord, I mean, David, will be with him. And uh, David's presence might be pro a protection to Saul when he went out with him to war. But there, it was an episode in, 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 in this life of the king. When after one of the battles and the victory that Israel had, the people just acclimated. They just said, well, Saul killed a number and David another number. At that time, he said, what can he have more but the kingdom? And so what? You in your family, you are a king. If he will be, you know, the successor of the throne, what's wrong? Because your son, he just appreciate, he's so friend with this, this man, David. What can you do if God use another person to uh, do his work for a specific purpose? My question, can you work with that person as a team? Could Saul work with David as a team? Theoretically, yes, but he didn't. It is possible. And I believe that the, the kingdom, it was in, in, in very good hands. Think about this very serious. How were the kingdom minded people? We had uh, studied about Moses. And one of the closest friends of Moses, the young fellow, Joshua, said, Hey, I heard about that other people are prophesying in the, the camp. Two of them, they are not here. Hey, please avoid them to say that. How was his answer? Man, you are, you are envy for my sake. No. If God is putting his spirit on these people, let them all. Can you imagine what was in his mind? as a leader, one prophet, greater prophet, and leader, to say, we'll have our, our camp formed only from, I mean, all of them will be leaders, will be prophets. How is that? Doesn't matter. If God wants this, let them do it. Well, what will happen when you, we turn away from the infinite power and look for help from, for the helpless uh, human being? Will that affect our mind and our spirituality? For sure. How the, uh, you know, the life of uh, King Saul was affected. I found a very interesting statement in the Spirit of Prophecy. It's eternity from past. Uh, page 472, uh, fragment 1. Saul's love from, of approbation had a controlling influence over his action and thoughts. His standards of right and wrong was popular applause. Saul's ambition was to be the first in the estimation of men. A settled conviction entered in the mind of the king that David would obtain the heart of the people and reign in his stead. And what, what's wrong with that? Is this thought from God? No. And God will never find jealousy or envy. This is not from heaven, heavenly place. The people that they want to be citizen in a heavenly place, they just have to check out if they are eligible for this. If you are jealous and envious and you have uh, selfishness, Check out, that's supposed to be on the list. You are not eligible to be there. So, the demon 
which is not the, from the heavenly place, is from other place. Of jealousy enters in Saul's heart. Saul opened his heart to the spirit of jealousy by which his soul was poisoned. The king of Israel was against the will of God. I'm continuing to read from the spirit of prophecy in the same book. Envy made Saul miserable. I'm just thinking, educated man was a leader of a nation. He had a prophet, the wisest man in the country at the time. He could ask for advice. He became miserable. No good manners. I mean, no faith, no love, no compassion. Just miserable. Demon possessed. You see, when you open your heart, to something that is not the, from the heavenly place. Well, he could have the opportunity to grow and his character would be changed. He had David, David beside him. But no, to be a citizen, you must see our lives through a kingdom perspective. So Jonathan said to David, whatever your self desire, I will do it for you. And the father said, well, you know what is the desire of this man? To take your kingdom. So what? If the Lord says that? <clears throat> we, we must be willing to lay our lives down for the benefit of others and to work for the cause of the Lord. Check on the list of eligibility. This is one condition to be there. Are you able to die for your neighbor? Are you able to give your life if the Lord will choose him to continue your work? Jonathan sacrificed his position for the throne in the light of the grace that he perceived from the Lord. So, the Lord showed him in, through his providence that, he, that David was the chosen one. And, and Jonathan accepted the condition. And also, he, he showed us that he recognized we must develop an attitude of honoring and preferring one another. So Jonathan recognized both season he was in. He knew when the Lord will use him to do something great for the, the country. He said, no, the Lord will work through me. And he went out and he was uh, victorious. He knew when it was, it was the time to step out in faith, to perform the great exploits, achievement. And he also recognized the reason, the season, sorry, of being a great man to encourage David. Are you prepared to be with this spirit? To know when to step farther, where you to step Say, Lord, thy will be done. If you pray that kingdom come, then you must accept what is written and the Lord Jesus Christ said in a prayer. Thy will be done. It's a must. So would you like to become a citizen of heaven? You have this responsibility to obey and to surrender. Kingdom people have a sense of where they are at and uh, what they have to be commissioned and to do or build for the kingdom of heaven. Do you? Do you have this sense? Uh, we have a, in, in the statement of the spirit of prophecy, 
When the record of those who through self-abnegation have entered in the fellowship of Christ suffering stand one in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. And I'm just asking you to tell me the names. One in the Old Testament and one in the, in the New Testament. Jonathan and John the Baptist. Thank you. So, John the Baptist, the same attitude. Uh, yeah, if we have more time, we can discuss about this. But thousands of people just following from high rank of society, middle class, and everyone just follow him. And one day, they just stop. And suddenly, he was in the prison. If he didn't have a good connection with God, he could say, no, this is wrong. But because of his connection with God and his consecration, he said, he must increase and I must decrease. So this is citizenship that we are looking for. This is one, one of the characteristics. In the heavenly place, there is no place for selfishness. There is no place for jealousy. There is no place for envy. Are you familiar with these words? Jealousy, envy, selfishness. Are you? Why you are familiar with this? I'm just telling you, are we aware of the effects of this uh, sin in our life? Sometimes they can stay hidden in our heart for a long time till you will recognize by your action that the motivation behind this is your jealousy, is envy, is your selfishness. The spirit of prophecy called the selfishness the top of the list. Under this sin, so many others. Have you ever felt envious about someone close to you? I mean, a friend. How is that possible? This is not from, from God. Unless we are fully converted, all of us inherit this sinful nature and comes as a bonus with jealousy, envy, you know, selfishness. Listen car carefully to this. I'll give you a very simple example. And you can be in agreement with me or not. Let's, let us take three or two or three children under the age of thir three years and put them in the same place or in the same room and give them only one toy. You can see if they uh, inherit this envy or jealousy or not. So we are born with this. We are born with this and we cannot deal with this in our power, my dear friends. In order to deal with this, we need to ask the Lord, thy will be done. What was the effect in the life of, of Saul? He was ruined and he didn't care of anything. He ended up going to the devil's house. The servant of the devil was his consultant at the end. My dear friends, did you disappoint someone because of jealousy? That happened in the family. And it's something that started when was first seen this sin or sinful nature in a heavenly place. So the one that promotes this is not God. If you disappoint your family, if you disappoint your friends, if you fail to do the good work in the family, in the workplace, in school, then check out what is in your life. And in order to, to be prepared for this, the heavenly place, you'll be tasted. As here on the planet Earth, in the physical life, 
we are tasted, if we are worthy or not, we will be tasted. And this could be one of your tastes. Unless we are born again, as the Lord Jesus Christ said, we will not be able to enter. The promises are there. The invitation is there. The sponsorship is there. But you will not be happy in the heavenly place. The mind of the beings of heavenly place is just to give and to love. We are not prepared if we have envy, jealousy, or selfishness in our life. We need to correct this now and then check out if you are eligible for the heavenly place. We learn in our Bible lesson today that uh, we must de develop an attitude of honoring and preferring one another. So let nothing be done through the strife of vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. You think it's easy? Just try to do something in, in, I mean, as a team. And you'll see, you'll be tasted. If you think it's easy, just try this in the family and you'll see. My dear friends, I will conclude with this verse from the scripture. In this the children of God are manifest. And to be a children of God, the result will be, if you are the son of king, and not worry about your citizenship, you will be there. Because you, you have the right to be there. Is in this the children of God are manifest. And the children of the, the devil, whosoever that not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew him, he him, because of him, of his own works were evil and his brother's righteousness. What was the reason? Does Cain has a reason to be jealous and envy? Envious? Consider this in your life. I will consider myself too. This has nothing to do with your brother that is wrong or something. Is you compare yourself and think about, oh, I'm not as good as you are. So then I can step on you or, you know, put you down. And then I can be, you know, greater than you. No, this is not from the heavenly place. The citizen of heaven will not do this. I would like to be there. And I believe that you would like to be there. Let us check out the list of the rights and responsibilities if you like to be eligible for the citizenship. And may the Lord change our heart. We are living in the process of transformation. God, God can transform our life. God help this king till the last day. He never give him, you know, uh, the opportunity to say, God, oh, you reject me and I don't, I don't want to come because you don't love me. No. The Lord loved him till the end. He didn't hear his voice. He went so far. And the Lord help us not to go that far. Just listen to the voice of the Lord today. And may God be honored in our life. Amen.